This Samsung AK TV is really a nightmare. So what's up guys, Fabria and welcome to Shades of Tech. This is CS 2020 week, so before the show start I wanted to give you my personal experience with this AK TV. This is the first AK TV from Samsung the second generation actually and this is the Q950R 65 inch and in the USA it's called Q900RB. We deeply talk of how this AK panel works and how good it is comparing with the 4K LG OLED C9 so definitely check this video out if you already didn't. And we talked about the new AK definition and standard that this TV doesn't meet, meaning that the pixels are too close and they don't meet the standard like the AK LG OLED TVs do. So I had mainly three big problems with this TV so far. I had the LG OLED C9 well mounted for about one month and I was going to unmount it to mount this AK TV. You'll see the wall mounting video of the LG OLED C9 probably next week. I wanted to test the wall mounting system of this AK TV and then I realized that it used a really wide 400 by 400 visa instead of the standard 300 visa that probably most of the other TV you can buy have and also the other monitors. This is really strange but more importantly the visa standard was placed in the upper part of the TV and not in the center or in the bottom part. And this is really a strange engineering decision. In fact, this TV has a really nice design. It's a square boxy design and it's really good for wall mounting. So I really don't understand this decision. And the problem with this design is that Basically, if you have a standard 300 visa wall mounting, it won't work because you need a wider bracket in the vertical and in the horizontal part. And more importantly, being the fixing point in the upper part of the TV, it means that if you have a wall mounting system already on the wall, you will probably have the TV going too down and going if you have a media center below, it will go against it, so you won't be able to push it toward the wall, and it's really unfortunate. But why did Samsung make this decision of putting the visa mount in this point? Is it a bigger TV? Is it a heavier TV? Well, I made some research and the LG OLED C9 I had was the same 65 inch, and the weight and dimension were basically the same. So. The real reason is that in the center of this TV there is the spot where you can mount the no-cab proprietary Samsung Sport that will make your TV go against the wall like a frame and it's really nice but it means that if you want to have a very good mount you have to buy Samsung proprietary wall mounting system and it's really an unfortunate thing. So if you already have a Visa mounting system on the wall you will probably have to buy another one if you don't have the 400 Visa or you will have to unmount and mount it higher. In fact you see this TV really nice against the wall but this is just perspective. Let me show you how it really is wall mounting this TV. So, as you can see, it's a really bad result. The problem is that the Samsung proprietary wall mounting system costs around $100 and it's very expensive for a wall mounting system. Luckily, I found a third party system that I have already ordered that will come in next week. So, I will mount it with this system and of course I'll let you guys know. But until that happens I am stuck with this really bad situation. So in conclusion if you already have a visa mount and you want a Qun series AK or maybe also 4K TV you must pay a lot of attention in measurement to understand if your current system will work otherwise you'll have to buy another one which is pretty stupid because visa is a standard. So my second big concern was about external audio. As you probably know, I talked widely in another video, I have a home theater 10.2 and uh, this is really the best audio system I have ever experienced, so of course I wanted to use it with this AK TV. The problem is that I wasn't able to make it work properly. With my LG OLED C9 I just plugged and played out of the box and it worked like charm, 
But with this TV I had a, a lot of problems. I took many hours to understand how this works because while I was turning off the TV, the TV automatically switched to the, the source, the TV source, and then you, when you turn on the TV again, you had to manually change to the own theater external output. And it's really annoying because the LG C9 just turned on and off with the same remote at the same time, and I wasn't able to do that. So I took many hours, and at the end of the day, I was able to make it work. And this is an example. Just let's put the sound on, turn off. As you heard, it turn off and then turn again on with the smart remote. And you see now the on theater started again. So I was able to do that, but I have no clue of how I did that. It was some random settings that after eight hours of trying, I was able to make it work. But, but it was really annoying considering that this TV cost $3,500 and it's a premium TV from the Samsung 2019 line. So it should work just right at the box for that price. And more importantly, there are other TV that cost way less that just right out the, the box work seamlessly. So I don't understand why Samsung continues not to apply to the standards because if there are standards, there is meaning because everybody have the same system. So really a bad user experience and talking about user experience, the third constraint I had with this TV was about color and picture settings and calibration. Because I was used to the LG OLED C9 that had some really sweet presets calibrated by expert with HDR content and so you couldn't go wrong with them, just have four or five of them, just switch and find the one you prefer. Now with Samsung you have some option but they are all terribly bad and so you have to go to the advanced settings and change them yourself. I don't know you but I'm not an expert in color calibration and picture colors so I started to play around and then I found my sweet spot but the problem is that one setting that works with one movie maybe doesn't work with another movie so it's really complicated and again for a $3500 TV premium from Samsung I expected something better, something already calibrated and already good out of the box. And then also the AK upscaling, which is really big in the Samsung commercial about this TV with AI upscaling. It was really wild and really random because with some content it works like charm. For example, with YouTube that, by the way, doesn't support YouTube AK. And I'll probably make a video about that. And it's really random. You have some controls again in the settings. You can sharpen it more or less, but then it creates some blur with fast movement and action scenes. And again, from an AK premium TV, I just wanted something that works just right out of the box. Because if I spend the kind of money, I want some premium materials. I don't want to spend days trying to figure it out, which is the best picture settings or AK upscaling. So as you probably understood, I have mixed feelings about this TV. I already said some of them in the AK versus 4K review. There are definitely some good things about this AK TV but you have to stay tuned until the full review of this TV. But I wanted to give you this quick update because in those weeks we will see a lot of talking about Samsung and AK. By the way, they already announced uh, the next model of this Q950 series that has really tiny bezels, even tinier than this. But I really don't see the point if they don't meet the standards of AK TV. It's like you make a picture and it's really blurry, not really good, but then you say, oh, the next model will have a frame that is thinner on the sides, but the picture is still not good if, even if you change the frame. So I really don't see the point of this, but definitely would like to review also this and compare the two models to see if they made some improvement. But I really don't think that they could meet the AK standard like LG OLED AK TV did because they are the real AK and these are not the real AK. And I don't think that in a few months they were able to make those big changes. So this was about it. 
Definitely stay tuned for the final review of the Q950R AK, the first AK made by Samsung. And as always, stay tuned on Shades of Tech for more coverage on TVs at CS 2020. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!